Another common task you will encounter as a K2 administrator is managing server rights and process rights for users and groups in your environment. In this section, we will take a look at the more common permissions you are likely to assign and the level of security those permissions grant. Make a note that most permissions here can be assigned to individual users or groups. There are primarily three levels of permissions that you as a K2 administrator will work with at the K2 server level. Let's run through a high-level overview. The overall role of the K2 administrator is this. This user has full control over K2 to manage the K2 environment. If this person in your environment is not a system, network, and or database administrator, they will need to work with these individuals fulfilling these roles in your environment. The K2 administrator assigns server rights and often process rights to other users. Let's take a look at the different options for server rights at this point. You do have three options for server rights permissions. Admin level permissions does have full control over the K2 server, and this is the K2 administrator role that we've been talking about. Users with export rights can publish or deploy workflows. Assign this right to users that will be building workflows and will need to deploy them, or users that need to see the K2 package and deployment tooling to deploy packages. Some organizations prefer to limit the number of users that actually build and deploy workflows as a quality control measure, while others grant export rights to all of their users. Impersonate rights is a system right that allows an account to impersonate another user after the initial connection is established. This server right is beyond the scope of this tutorial and is an advanced use case that we will not cover. We just talked about K2 server level rights. The next level we will address has to do with individual process rights. Process rights are permissions that are assigned for each individual process. To lay this out, at some point in time, you may build a workflow for a specific target group of users. To prevent other users from submitting the workflow, you can control the workflow access with process rights. And these process rights consist of the following. Admin level rights at the process level are required to view, add, and edit the process rights for a deployed process and administer active workflow instances. Start level rights give users the ability to start workflow instances under a particular process. View level rights gives users the ability to report on all instances of a particular workflow. And dropping down a bit from view level rights, the view participate level right gives users the ability to report only on those workflow instances where they are the originator. In other words, the person who submitted the original form or where they participated in an instance by performing an action on a user task. Server event level is a special type of permission used for asynchronous server tasks where an external system completes a K2 server event. This is again another permission option that is beyond the scope of this tutorial, so we will not cover it at this point in time. Let's move on with the tutorial now and walk through how to assign these rights to users in K2 Workspace. In step one of this tutorial, we will show how to give a user workflow publishing rights by granting Anthony export rights so that he can deploy or publish workflows. This is a very short step, but to complete it, you will need to have K2 Workspace open again. You can launch K2 Workspace if it's not open already. Remember, if you're on a K2 virtual machine or server, you can find it under the Start button menu. Go into All Programs, select K2 Black Pearl, and there you should find K2 Black Pearl Workspace. Let's drop down to the Server Rights node in the Management Console. You can get there by hovering over the Management option in the menu at the top. Select Management Console, then open up the K2 server tree node, drill down into workflow server, and select server rights. And here let's click the add button, and then search for Anthony's account. Once you bring up that account, you can select it, and then click OK on this screen. On the next screen, put a check under the export box. This is going to let him publish workflows and click Save. At this point, you should now see Anthony has been added to the list of users and groups that have permissions under this K2 server as a whole.
And that's how you add permissions at the server level. To elaborate on this a little bit more, we granted Anthony export rights so that he can deploy workflows to this K2 environment. Notice that all portal members and owners also have export rights on this current setup. Typically, you would not grant individual users rights if you have already granted all users export rights in your environment. The assumption on my VM is that all users are included in the portal members group. Some organizations may grant export rights to a handful of users as quality control measures. However, users in this scenario are most likely application designers and have had more advanced training than the typical user. Other organizations do grant all users export rights and allow everyone to build and deploy workflows. Just know that this depends on your individual business requirements. You may only want to do this in a development type environment. Moving on to step two, we're going to explore specific workflow process rights assigned to a single process. We will give one user admin rights to a particular process, and then we will set up start rights for a group in another example. While still under the management console, let's go into the workflow server pane and expand processes, drill into the K2 learning workflow administration category, then open up Workflow Administration Sample Process and click on Process Rights to expose the Process Rights screen for this workflow. At this point, you should see that the administrator account is the only user with process rights. This would be if you're on a K2-provided virtual machine. The next thing we're going to do is add Bob and give him admin rights to this sample process. This will allow Bob the ability to grant permissions for this single process as his requirements dictate. In the Process Rights screen, let's click Add, then search for and select Bob. Once you find Bob in the list, you can click OK. You should now see a screen displaying Bob's name and the process rights available to him. Let's put a check in the box for Admin, then click Save. OK, that's all we need to do for Bob at this point. Let's move on and grant start rights to all the users in our environment. This is going to allow anyone in the environment to submit the workflow administration sample process. We can click add once again. This time search for the group called domain users. Put a mark in the box next to domain users in the results pane and click OK. On the next screen, all we need to do is put a check in the start box for domain users, then click save. And your screen should look like mine at this point. What we've seen here is that process rights can be assigned to both individual users and groups of users. To delete the process rights for a user or group, all you have to do is uncheck all of the rights that are currently assigned to them, mainly start, view, etc., and then click Save. Users with no permission levels here indicated will be removed from the process rights upon saving. In this final step, we granted permissions, or in other words, process rights to the workflow administration sample process. With admin level rights, Bob can now assign permissions for this process as his requirements come in. All domain users now have the ability to start this workflow. In assigning these process rights, we also observed how we can assign and remove rights to both individuals and groups. We would like to thank you for watching this video on managing permissions in K2 Workspace. On the whole, we hope this series of tutorials were helpful to you in explaining how to perform many of the administration tasks involved with managing a K2 environment. Although we only hit on just some of the basics, we have covered the bulk of the most common tasks your administrators will see. You have now completed the Administering K2 tutorial. If you would like to review the topics covered or work through some challenge exercises, feel free to continue on to the Summary and Challenge Steps section.